JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 10th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an, an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It underperformed against NZD, AUD, CAT and slightly versus CHF while it gained uh, versus the British pound and the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against uh, the euro. Now the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi, Aussie and Looney combined with the weakening of the safe haven yen suggests that markets may have continued trading in, uh, in a risk-on manner uh, ahead of today's uh, US CPIs. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that the major European and US indices were a sea of green, but appetite softened during the Asian session today. It seems that investors continue to cheer the overall better than expected earnings results or, as we said yesterday, they may be in a rush to take advantage of the low interest rate environment before uh, the Fed begins its, um, its hiking cycle. However, they may have turned cautious uh, during the Asian session today and wait for uh, the CPIs. Now, today's CPIs are expected to reveal further acceleration in both uh, headline and core terms, something that may add to the view of aggressive tightening by the Fed and may result in a pullback in the stock market and a rebound in the US dollar. That said, even if this is the case, we will not call for a trend reversal as market participants are, are already pricing in five quarter point increases by the Fed for this year. And they seem willing to buy stocks even when they anticipate so many rate lifters. So, as we already noted several times, maybe they want to exploit low interest rates as much as they can. Now, as for, as for tomorrow, during the early European morning, we get the preliminary UK GDP for, UK GDP for the fourth quarter, which is forecast to have grown 1.1% quarter over quarter, the same quarterly pays us in the third quarter. However, this is likely to take the year-over-year -year rate slightly lower to 6.5% from 6.8%. At the same time, we get uh, the nation's industrial and manufacturing production rates for December, and both of them are expected to have declined notably. At last week's uh, decision, the Bank of England decided to lift interest rates by 25 basis points to 0.50% via a 5 to 4 vote with the 40 centers calling for a double hike. Given that only one member needs to be convinced that a double hike may be appropriate at the next gathering, economic data may attract more attention moving forward. Therefore, a positive surprise in uh, the GDP data uh, could increase speculation for a double hike at the next uh, Bank of England gathering and perhaps support the pound while a disappointment could add to the case for another quarter point uh, lift of which could prove negative for the currency as this is already priced in. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about, about the main events um, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So. Goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.